Alrighty, boys and girls, it is the next day. Obviously, we got Orwell in the shop last night. Um, it snowed in last. It snowed last night into tonight, so this will be a lot easier to get the starter pulled. Obviously, I have the cab jacked up, ready to go. It sounds dumb, but the only reason I need the cab jacked up is to get one bolt on the other side. The rest come out from the bottom. But I do have to get the battery box opened up and disconnect the batteries. One of these days I'm going to buy that remote jumper kit, you know, where you hook your battery cables up to an alternate source when you have a battery box that's buried. I need to do that because I'm getting tired of having to jack the cab up anytime I need to either jumpstart or well, which honestly is a rarity. But usually I'm having to use or well to jumpstart other things like my landlord's lift or my landlord's lift or a fire truck in Jacksonville. Either way, that video ought to be coming up here reasonably soon. I'm not really sure how FSC Trucking Channel schedule works out with this channel, FSC Truck Shop, but the two are kind of interconnected, obviously. I just don't put the videos in a chronological order. By the way, I am limping today. I am a little injured. Um, working on at Detroit has really got my carpal tunnel ripping right now, and all of this right here is on fire. So, so don't mind me if I look like I'm wincing in pain, because I am. Cowboy up and soldier on. All right, first things first, get the... Battery box up, batteries disconnected. Now you can see in the comments. So you gotta take, take better care of yourself, FSC. You know, your carpal tunnel and all. Everybody's got opinions. Operating a truck, fixing a truck, running a shop. Oh, takes a lot out of you. And we're trying to buy a nicer place. Because living where we're living now is beat. Plus we're moving the shop, so. I just don't know when that'll be. And then of course there's the time it takes to surgery. And all of that, so. Get done one day. All right, there you go. Enough crying. The top starter bolt is right down there. Might be really difficult to see. I'm using the GoPro now, and of course, the tiny screen. It's right there, circled in red. It's a 5/8, 12 point, and the fun part's always getting a socket on there. We're going to again take that off and then we'll go on to remove the wires and remove the other two. I'm just going to try to position the GoPro where you fellas can see. Yay, I can reach it. Put a swivel on it. Let me try to rattle it with an impact. I'll put it in by hand, but that did work. Or it's getting it out, so that makes my life easier. That's the hardest part. That's, well, short of lifting it. Ooh, that'll set me on fire. Yay! Can't wait. Start disconnecting and pulling the starter. I see what the problem is, it's shining me straight in the face. Me and Matt were under here messing with trying to change the relay off camera. 
about a week or two ago. I attached Matt. I can't really say if I blame him or not. The bolt looks broke. Oh, the head broke off. All right, so it's not Matt's fault. The solenoid pulls the power from the batteries directly into the starter. What it does is it, there's a switch in here when the signal wire, which is this one, pulls the relay in, it trips the trigger in here, which puts battery power straight into the starter motor via this strap. And there's a bolt in that starter that's missing. So now when it pulls in, it doesn't actually engage the motor itself. And that's the problem. However, it really wasn't making any katunk noise. But I can see there's a, there's a shank of the bolt in there. So the bolt broke. Whether we broke it or not, that's kind of irrelevant. It is broke. Okay, so with that, now we have to yank all this crap out. So these are the primaries from the battery. And then this is to the truck itself with positive 12. This grounds the solenoid to the case, the case grounds to the block, and this is your signal wire coming from up somewhere north of here. Of course, it's all oily because the original factory injector pump, well, it leaks. What up, Chris? There's music in my head. All right, this should do it. I have a full set. No, I don't. I have to go get it. It's in the roll cart. problem with us guys that do filming for a living anymore. We talk to ourselves. Maybe one day my kids will watch these masters and wonder what I did and why I did it. I always wonder if the kids will pay attention to what I did long after. What did Grandpa do? Tell me, Mommy, tell me. Oh, he messed with these old ass trucks. Beat himself to death in the process. <sighs> Batteries are three quarters. leave a comment how many of you guys do this kind of work yourself how many of you guys do this stuff with your sons or daughters even you know, a lot of the racetrack you see a lot of girls driving race cars and working on race cars believe it or not Matt's 17 he's got a job now so he doesn't have the ability to work with dad as much as he used to he puts in the hours he is a hard worker when he works he's a hard worker Yeah, you're gonna wanna be a pain in my butt. Alright, what's that? I don't know what that is. Oh, that's the hotline. And I don't remember what size that is, nor could I see it. And it's gonna be a socket, not wrenches. Idiot. I can pull the ground off, though. If I let me.
All we got left is a signal. all the wires the gorilla to put that in. Me. Listen to that. Put never sees on there, that's why I was a little tight. I was worried about galling the aluminum, pulling the aluminum from the threads inside the housing, which is aluminum. You don't want to do that. Sure don't. Now, how it. I guess you do it with the flinch. I think I've done this job twice and I still don't remember. Yeah, sure enough. I think I remember how I did it. Yeah. Stand by. The only 5.8 socket with 12 point I have is half drive. When I can fish a 3.8, it's a skinnier extension, so I can fish a 3.8 in there. Enough to 
be finger loose. So what I'll do Thread that one in so it'll land on our head. This thing does not feel good on your head if it lands on it. I can guarantee you that. I right, stay with her. Stay. You stay with her too. Ultimately what killed this starter wasn't the starter or anything I did other than what we were doing earlier. From cranking on it and use and oil dripping in it, the solenoid, you had to bump the key a bunch of times. It's actually a push button. You got to bump, bump, bump a few times. Every now and again it would give me that trouble and I felt it was the switch inside here. So me and Matt took this apart and there wasn't anything we could do with it because the part that we had bought didn't have the plunger. We didn't film none of this, probably should have. But when we put it back together, we attached the strap and the bolt right there is supposed to be a bolt head. You can see it, it's missing. The shank is still in the hole. So the bolt head snapped off. It's not transferring power from the batteries to the actual motor, this part of the motor. This simply pulls the gear in, the Bendix on the other side over here. And that's what happened. So now all I gotta do is just take pictures of it to get the clock position right, and I can bring this in tomorrow to Peterbilt and return it for a core. Who makes this? TRP, part number RE4252, 40, RE4252, 40, RE 4252, TRP. Owie, 